So this is a National 4, National 5 chemistry lesson on rates of reaction. And today's lesson is going to look at catalysts. So today what we're going to learn about is catalysts and how they affect the rate of a chemical reaction. And by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to describe how catalysts affect the rate of reaction and explain how this factor affects the rate of reaction. You'll also be able to define two different types of catalysts. So what are catalysts? Catalysts are substances that change the rate of reaction without being used up by the reaction itself. So that means it's a chemical that you can add to a reaction, but you'll be able to get it back unaffected by the reaction at the end. So a catalyst, um, they don't make you produce more product than without a catalyst. What they do is they just speed up the ability to make your product. Now catalysts work in different ways, but the effect um, of how a catalyst speeds up reaction rate is by affecting the activation energy. Now, activation energy, this is the initial amount of energy that you need to give a chemical reaction in order for it to start. In the same way that, you know, it might take you a little bit of while to get out of bed and get yourself enough energy to get started with the day, chemical reactions also need a little bit of energy in order for them to get started. A good example of this is a Bunsen burner. So the reaction happening in a Bunsen burner is between the oxygen in the air and the gas coming out of the gas tap. Whenever you mix those two things together, it doesn't automatically start the chemical reaction and produce a flame. You need to give it a spark of energy or um, a spark of heat in order for it to start. That amount of energy that you need to provide at the beginning of a chemical reaction is called the activation energy. The lower the value of activation energy, the more easy it is for a reaction to start and the quicker it will happen. So catalysts affect activation energy. And you can see with the catalyst, um, the hill, um, the bump, that the reactants have to go through or go over before getting to the products is a lot lower. That hill is the activation energy. Now, a good example of a catalyst is elephant's toothpaste. Now, if you're in class, you may get to see a demonstration of this. If not, I suggest that you have a look at elephant's toothpaste on YouTube because the videos are quite impressive. And it's an example of a reaction where you add a catalyst and you get a reaction happening very, very, very quickly. And it looks very impressive. Now catalysts um, come under two categories. So there are two types of catalysts. The first one, and this is a big word, heterogeneous. A heterogeneous catalyst. This is when the catalyst is in a different physical state than the reactants. Now, often this means that the catalyst is a solid and your reactants are either gases, liquids, or in solution. And as soon as you add that solid to your liquid or to the gas, the reaction will start to happen. And at the end of the reaction, you will be able to get that solid back. The exact same amount of solid as you put in, you will be able to get back. The second type of catalyst is called a homogeneous catalyst. And a homogeneous catalyst is when the catalyst is in the same physical state as the reactants. So it could be a solid catalyst with solid reactants or a liquid catalyst with liquid reactants. The second one, the liquid catalyst and liquid reactants, is the most common. And you can tell if a homogeneous catalyst is being used because your catalyst will usually be colored. When the reaction is happening, the catalyst will change color, but then 
at the very end of the reaction when it's over, you will see the color change back to the color it was at the start. And that's because the catalyst is um, returning back to its normal state. You're getting it back again. So with a homogeneous catalyst, it starts one color, during the reaction changes to another color, and then it changes back to its original color at the end. That is a good sign that a homogeneous catalyst has been involved in a reaction. Now catalysts are used in everyday situations. Many catalysts are transition metals. So remember that's the middle part of the periodic table. Um, so transition metals or compounds made from transition metals. So nickel, for an example, is used to turn oils, vegetable oils, into margarine. Um, and that reaction is called hydrogenation because uh, you're adding atoms of hydrogen into the oil and that makes it turn into a solid that you can spread. Iron, um, you probably will have looked at the Haber process in terms of making fertilizers and iron is the catalyst for the production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. Platinum, so platinum was the catalyst also from the fertilizers topic. Platinum is the catalyst for the Ostwald process, but platinum is also a catalyst found in lots of cars in the exhaust pipe. Um, and what the catalyst does is it converts um, poisonous, dangerous polluting gases like carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide into less polluting um, products like carbon dioxide and nitrogen. So a catalyst is fitted onto the exhaust pipe of most um, cars these days to stop them producing so much um, carbon dioxide and nitrogen oxide, which are harmful to the planet. Now, catalysts are used all the time in the chemical industry. Um, and the reason is because it's really important um, for you to make your products quickly, because the quicker you can make your products, you are saving money on the time that you're saving. So catalysts, they reduce the need to use high temperatures because they are lowering the activation energy. If a, if a reaction needs less energy to get started, it means you can do the reaction at a colder temperature, which saves you money on fuel or electricity and also reduces the pollution which comes from burning fuel. And catalysts are really important and good for industry because they are not used up during the reaction. They can be recovered. And it means you can use the same catalyst over and over and over and over again, which means that you're not needing to spend more money on new catalyst each time you want to do the same reaction. You can just buy the catalyst once and use it over and over and over again. Catalysts are also uh, part of all of biological systems. They're inside our cells and um, they are inside um, your saliva to help you break down food, inside your stomach to help you break down food. Uh, catalysts are everywhere inside the human body and inside all biological cells. Um, now, the catalysts in biology are given a different name. Um, they are called enzymes. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst. So just to go over some of the words that we used, um, we have activation energy. The activation energy was the amount of energy needed to start a reaction. A catalyst was a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without being used up. Concentration is the number of molecules of a substance in a given volume. An enzyme was a biological catalyst. And rate of reaction is the change in concentration, volume, or mass over a certain period of time. Rate of reaction is the change in quantity divided by the change in time. So now you should be able to describe how a catalyst affects the rate of reaction, uh, specifically that it affects the activation energy, and by catalysts lowering the activation energy, they speed up the rate of reaction. 
You should also be able to distinguish between a homogeneous and a heterogeneous catalyst. A heterogeneous catalyst is usually in a different physical state from the reactants. The catalyst is usually a solid and the reactants are either gases or liquids. And a homogeneous catalyst is in the same physical state as the reactants. Usually the reactants are liquid and the catalyst is either a liquid or a solution. What we're going to do now is look at some uh, past paper questions. Um, and before we do that, we'll just do a summary of rates of reaction. So anything that increases the number of successful collisions between reactant particles will speed up the chemical reaction. So the factors that affect the rate of reaction, if you increase the temperature, you will increase the rate of reaction. If you increase the concentration, you will increase the rate of reaction. And if you decrease particle size, you will increase the rate of chemical reactions. And we also looked at being able to use a catalyst to increase the rate of reaction. So if you want to make a reaction faster, you do it hotter, you do it more concentrated, you lower the particle size, or you could add a catalyst. So here are those questions I said about. So this one is to give a definition of a homogeneous catalyst. With these, you can either keep the answer in your head, you can pause the video to write the answers down, or you can just listen to the answers, it's your choice. But the answer to what is a homogeneous catalyst is a catalyst that is in the same state or same physical state as the reactants. For example, a solid catalyst working on solid reactants. What is a heterogeneous catalyst? A heterogeneous catalyst is one that is in a different um, physical state than the reactants. For example, that could be a solid catalyst acting on liquid reactants. Why are catalysts used in industry? Um, so catalysts are used to speed up the reaction. They are cheap and they reduce the cost of reactions. So they speed up the reaction. They are cheap because they can be reused and they reduce the cost of reactions. So give an example of a catalyst which is used in an industrial process. So in these slides, there were three examples. So if you can't remember, you could rewind the slides, the video, and see. But an example could be iron for the Haber process, so that's for making ammonia, nickel for the hydrogenation of uh, oils to make margarine. You could have also said platinum for catalytic converters or platinum for the Oswald process. So this is a past paper question. We were told that a reaction was catalyzed by a solution of iron three plus ions, um, which is amber in color. Why is the term homogeneous used to describe this catalyst? And then secondly, what colour would the solution be at the end of the reaction? Well, uh, a homogeneous um, means that the reactant and catalyst are in the same physical state. And the colour at the end of the reaction would be amber. And that's because a catalyst is not used up and you get your catalyst back at the end. So if your catalyst was amber colored at the start of the reaction, the reaction would turn back to amber at the end of the reaction. So we've got a question here. When dinitrogen oxide is mixed with methane in the presence of a palladium catalyst, an explosive reaction takes place. So balance the above equation. Don't think you need to do that one, but feel free. But the second uh, question part B, why can the palladium metal be described as a heterogeneous catalyst? So 
why can it be described as a heterogeneous catalyst? And that is because if you looked at the equation, you could see that um, dinitrogen oxide and methane are both gases, but palladium metal is a solid. It is in a different physical state from the, from the reactants, which makes it a heterogeneous catalyst. Now, what we have here is our final question, I believe. Excess marble chips were added to 25 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid of concentration 2 moles per litre. And we have a graph here which has time along the bottom and all it says on the left hand side on the y-axis is measurement taken. The question is which of the following measurements would give a graph of that shape if it were plotted? at regular intervals for time. So in the axis measurement taken, should that be temperature? Should that be volume of gas produced? Should that be pH of solution? Or should that be mass of the beaker and contents? Well, the answer is mass of the beaker and contents. Um, temperature, volume, and pH of solution uh, would all increase during the reaction. Mass is the only thing that would decrease as calcium carbonate, marble, or chalk produces carbon dioxide, which would leave the reaction, causing it to lose mass. So that was our lesson on uh, catalysts and rates of reaction. I will catch you next time.